Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a quilt using Kafe Facet Prints. We love Kafe Facet Prints. So I've pulled out a nice selection here and you can see how vibrant the colors are in all of his prints. And I'm gonna pair each print with one of the grunge. So this is a line from Moda Fabrics and it acts like a solid, but it's got a little bit of something going on. So I'm gonna match each one of these prints with a grunge and we're going to make some really nice star patchwork. I've already got a few of the blocks started, so come on over to the workroom and I'll show you how to cut them and I'll show you how to sew them. Here's the blocks I have stitched together and you can see how much fun and how bright they are. That's the nice thing about working with the K facet prints. They are just brilliant and they just pop out. So if you see these two blocks here, they're just a positive negative with the same fabrics. Now, when we make the blocks, we're gonna get some little half square triangles. Every, with every block we make, we're gonna get some half square triangles. So we're gonna show you how to put those together into this kite tail border. And then we're gonna border it all up, put the quilt together. But first, I'm gonna show you how to cut and piece the star blocks. I've made myself a cutting diagram here, and I'm gonna be using one quarter yard of each print that's in the stars. So this is gonna make two stars. So I cut this off the bolt and I ironed it up nice and neat, and now I'm going to cut a seven and a half inch strip from it. I've got these cut into seven and a half inches wide, and I refolded it because I need just a single layer of six inches here, then another six. So I'm gonna do some sub cuts. So I'm gonna follow the cutting diagram, which we will have on the website. I'm gonna cut a six and then another six and a three and three quarters and a three and a half. And then I need one more three and a half. Now we're going to subcut some of these items. This gets subcut to a six inch square. And I've got both of these lined up here because they're going to get subcut to the same number. So they need to be three and three quarters. And it's actually cutting it right in half. And then these last pieces I've lined up because they, they need to be three and a half inches square. So we're going to do a three and a half here. And one more three and a half. And then everything is cut. Now I used my handwritten cutting sheet here to do my cutting. We will make this much neater and easier to read and put it on the website as a free download. So you'll be able to just print that off and you'll be able to see exactly what to cut. The next step is to draw on the back side of your three and a half inch squares. So we are going to draw a diagonal from tip to tip here. I'm just gonna use a pencil. There's lots of fun marking tools. Then we need to make another line one half inch away. just on that one side. So right down the middle and one half inch away. So do that on the back of all of your squares. So these are all the pieces I need to make one block. So we are going to make the point of the stars by sewing along this diagonal. Now you'll notice this square is not the same size as the background. That's because we're gonna do floating points. So the points aren't gonna come all the way out to the end. Makes it a little bit easier to match. So I'm gonna stitch right on, the, right on the pencil line. And I'm gonna chain piece these, so I'm gonna do the same thing to all of them. So we're gonna stitch on that diagonal line and you'll notice that line that's a half inch away is towards the corner. So I stitched down the first line now I've just turned it around. I'm gonna leave the pieces stuck together like this with the threads, and I'm just gonna sew down that other line.
Again, you can leave it on the machine and just keep stitching. So here's our pieces ready to iron. Now I've used a lighter thread because I want you to be able to see it in the videos. I normally use a thread that matches a little bit better. So I like to iron these flat first in case they got stretched out a little bit while we were sewing. Now we are going to fold this right along the sewing line and it's the corners are going to meet and then we're going to give it a little steam. So fold every one. I like this method of doing corners or pointed stars because you can make sure that everything is really well lined up because it, you can distort if you had cut a triangle and just stitched it onto a shaped piece background, it sometimes distorts, but this way you know if those corners meet that you've got them cut and sewn exact. Next step is to trim off the extra layers in the back here. And since we've already got it stitched, when we trim, we are going to have a half square triangle. And we're going to use this for that cute border that I showed you, the kite tail border. So I'm just going to set those aside for now. Trim all these off. And we're going to finish making the star block. Next step is to put the triangle or the square into a triangle in the lower right corner here. Again, diagonal line there, half inch away towards the corner. And we're gonna stitch down that diagonal. Keep it on the machine, chain piece them all. It goes really, really fast. Now we'll take these over and iron them. So remember, this extra piece that we're going to cut off here, we're not just going to put it aside and not use it. That's going to make that kite tail border. So it's really nice to get this done at the same time with almost no extra work. Let's iron these flat. And again, we're going to open it up to meet that corner there. And now we can see a little bit of the pattern starting to show. So again, open it back up, trim right in the middle between those lines and put those aside. Here's all the pieces for the one star block. So I'm going to just sew them all together now. This really sews up really fast. It's one of the faster quilts I've made. The blocks are pretty big and I did that on purpose because the K facet prints normally have such a large scale and I didn't want to cut them up into itty bitty pieces. So when I make my blocks, I still chain piece. I like to keep them all together. I'm not going to cut this apart. I'm just going to open this up and then I'm going to sew all these pieces on here. That helps make sure I don't get a row turned upside down and get my points pointing in instead of pointing out. So now we just need to sew the rows together, but before we do that, we're going to want to finger press our seams. Now I'm going to finger press these seams out, and the reason I'm going to press them out is because it's thicker here because there's a couple layers there, so the seam naturally wants to go that way anyway. So both of these are going to go out. Because these are out, we want these seams to go in, and again, they're a little bit thicker here, so they want to go in. They want to face the middle naturally. So I'm opening it up and then finger pressing with the back of the fingernail. And again, these ones are gonna go out. 
This way my seam allowances are all alternating in direction and that's going to make it real easy to get these rows sewn together. Now you'll notice the star is overlapping a little and I like the look of that. I also like these points not coming all the way to a quarter inch because when we sew our blocks together I never risk getting my points chopped off if my seam allowance is a little too big. So the block is designed to have a little bit of space here and to have the points float just a little. Now we're going to sew the rows together. I like to start with a couple of stitches and that anchors it and then I'm going to make these edges meet and then I can feel with my fingers if those intersections are meeting. Because the seams the seam allowances are going in different directions, they butt right up and they, it makes it really easy to match them. Honestly, this is one pattern where if they don't match, you can't tell because there's just a different color here. So even if that didn't match, you can't tell when the quilt is done at all, which is nice. All right, the first block is all done and we're going to go over and we're going to iron it and we are going to press these seams away from the middle. So you might want to finger press it a little bit first. It's slightly bulky right here, but if you just hit it hard with your fingernail, they'll iron up really nice and flat. Now that we've got this first block made, use that same method to make all the rest of your blocks. So remember, there's one positive and one negative of, the, of each group of fabrics you cut. Lay them out into rows. Now I've got these two rows already sewn together. I just need to sew that row together and then my quilt top for patchwork will be done. Now I want to show you how to make the really fun border. So let's go over to the ironing board because I've got some pieces ready to go there. These are the half square triangle units that we had left over when we cut off the excess from the block there. So we need to iron them open and we need to cut off the dog ears. The reason I didn't iron them all open to begin with is because I wasn't sure what order they were going to be in for the border and I wanted to make sure all the seam allowances were going the same way. This is the order I'm going to use, those and those. So for this particular piece, all the seam allowances are going to be going towards the printed side. So we're just going to open it up and give it a little pressing and a little steam and then we're going to trim off the dog ears. So I'm going to do this with all the pieces. Now some of them are a little bit thicker on one corner because of the way we cut them from my overlapped corners. So there's a little bit extra in there, but it doesn't really matter. You'd use the same procedure. Just notice it's going to be a little thicker in that corner and most of it's going to get trimmed off. So we're going to do this with all of our half square triangle blocks and then we're going to stitch them into a border. I'm just going to pick these up in order and stitch them together. Because the seam allowances are going in opposite directions, when we put them right sides together here, it's going to be real easy to match up that seam line there. Now we'll take the next one and stitch it on. Again, they will match right up and they're laying in different directions, making it lay really, really flat. Now this part that's already stitched together, all of the seam allowances are facing that way. So we want all of these to be going the other way. So I'm just going to finger press them first, then we're going to take it over to the ironing board and we're going to steam press it really, really flat. Now it's pressed nice and flat and you can see they're going to match up really nicely. You can make these in a really long piece, as long as the whole border. It's actually, it's just the same shape. 
continued. So you could just make one really long border, cut it in half, and then turn this around. Also, if you want a different shaped border, you could do like that, and then you would get squares, or maybe you want the colors meeting up. So these are all options you have. I tried out the different options, and I really liked this best because it looks like a twisted kite tail. So we're going to sew these together now, and we're going to match everything up carefully. I'm stitching carefully, and I'm matching up each intersection. You can feel it if they're matched up. You can always stick a pin through if you're not sure if they're in the right position. Now we're going to open it up and take it to the ironing board and give it a nice pressing. Here's the ironed patchwork piece here. You might find it easy to make them in this size and just make three of them for each border. You will have plenty of half square triangles, more than enough to do a border on the top and the bottom of the quilt. Now this is a little bit longer than my patchwork because I'm going to put a border around the whole quilt first, then I'm going to put this on the end, and then I'm going to put another border all the way around the quilt. I'm so happy with how the quilt came out. This was really, really fun to make. So I had in my mind when I saw the fabrics, these big stars, but I'm just really happy. This is such a cheerful, fun quilt. This is what makes quilting fun. So now you can see a little better our pieced border here. So we're calling it a kite tail border because it just looks like a kite tail that's blowing in the wind there. You do have to be a little bit careful when you stitch this on. You do have to measure this border and make this exactly that size. Now you can see here on the stars, all the points are floating. So these points don't come all the way to the seam. So every point shows up really, really sharp. You can see this star and this star. They're the positive negative. They're the same fabrics but this has the more solid print on the outside, and this one has it in the middle. When I was designing this quilt, I really thought that I was gonna like these stars with the print in them the best. But then when I made the plain ones, I almost like those better, especially this one here. The orange just looks really, really good. So all of these brilliant prints are really balanced, this is the grunge again that I've used for the background. It has just a little shading in it, and it really makes those prints sing. I did an all-over quilting pattern that's a little bit abstract. It seems to go really well with the K facet prints. You can see I've got one border going all the way around. Then I sandwiched the pieced border between these one inch pieces here, and I had to fill in a little more on the sides. It just happened to come out the exact same size here. That wasn't on purpose. That was just a happy coincidence. And then I put another red border all the way around it. We used this green on the back. Really fun, even if you flip it over. I really haven't had quite this much fun making a quilt in a long, long time. So when you see these quilts in our videos, they're usually ones that I've designed as I'm making it. So I just finished this, just finished doing the pattern. So you will, will be able to get this as a free download on our website. And we're also gonna have these in pre-cut kits. So if you don't wanna read the pattern, you just wanna get right to the sewing, you can buy the kit. Thanks for watching our tutorial today and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.